this is the materials research area. So, so we're now going into materials research <coughs> area of the university where my colleague Angela Seddon is making glasses with erbium in it for use in these fibres. Sorry, Anne. Free second. No. <laughs> okay, so we're here now. I'll just warn David that we've arrived. Fine, and yes. And I, like that, I like that laser sign on. So. Okay, go ahead, go on in. It looks good. Hi. 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 Okay, Hi. so Hi. this is Brady. I'm David. Explain that to me. What do you do? Why is that? What do you, what, what's the danger? Well, what are we, we, pre we can't see the laser beam. We're going to take care that it doesn't go anywhere it shouldn't, but we're going to put some goggles on, which these glasses will absorb any of the infrared laser light, so it won't go into our eyes should we get any uh, reflections coming from the laser. Well, you can see some lasers, but these are in the infrared, and that's where your infrared on the remote control for your television works. So uh, this will actually stop the light from your remote control as well. The okay. important thing is to get it out of our eyes. Okay. I'm going to switch this little infrared laser on. The beam from this laser, which we can't see, will be then focused down by a lens in here into a piece of glass here. Now this glass has got erbium in it. Well this particular glass is based on fluorides instead of oxides and we just add the erbium as erbium fluoride when we're melting the glass and it all goes into solution together and gives it this nice pink colour. It does look kind of pink, do you know why it looks pink like that? It's absorbing some of the wavelengths of light that we normally see. So the light that's then left behind is pink in appearance. Alright, and what do you expect to happen when this laser goes on? Well, the infrared laser, the infrared light is low energy photons, but the erbium is going to absorb several of those and give them out as one larger energy photon, which is going to be in the visible where we can see it in the green. If we put a piece of paper and we can't see any of the beam at all because it's totally invisible to our eyes. If we put this plate in, this fluoresces a little bit in the infrared and we can use it to find out where the beam is. You're looking at the infrared laser beam being focused into the erbium and the erbium is absorbing several photons of the infrared, storing them and then emitting them as one photon of green. Why are we doing this with a laser? Why can't we just do this with a light bulb? Why is it better to show me this with a laser? Well, you need to, to demonstrate this properly, you need to use infrared light so that you can see the invisible light is being converted to visible light. So a light bulb would be able to see that anyway and it wouldn't have the intensity. We need to be able to focus the light down so there's a very high intensity. Yes, this laser that we're using here to stimulate this fluorescence is exactly the same kind of laser that's used as part of the internet. Um, so the internet is all about is sending our um, emails around the world very fast at the speed of light and they travel as, as laser pulses of light uh, digitally encoded for the information. Um, and in fact, um, until recently, the, fiber, the optical fibres that transmit these pulses just passively transmit the light from A to B. But what happened was a very interesting invention at the University of Southampton in Great Britain, which brought about the all-optical amplifier. And this is simply dissolving erbium ions into glass, stretching that into fibre and splicing that special fibre into the internet. When our telephone signal or data signal, a pulse of light, enters that special bit of fibre, it actually stimulates emission of more photons, of more light. So that means that, in effect, the light is amplifying the light, and this enables the signal to keep transmitting. So you need to keep amplifying about every 50 kilometres or so, and this is the way that the light now can travel around the world so quickly and not be depleted in energy. Can you show me? Well, erbium is very special because you can stimulate the fluorescence, we see the green fluorescence, but the near-infrared fluorescence that we can't see. In fact, the wavelength of that light exactly matches the wavelength of light that is used by the internet. And that wavelength of light is dictated by how transparent the glass is. So it's a complete coincidence that the fluorescence um, light of a single wavelength that comes out of the erbium ions in the glass, in the near-infrared, just matches exactly the signal photons going around the internet. It was an invention after the fibre optic internet was installed. So the, that the erbium ions give out this, this exact right emission of light is a pure coincidence. And um, also, it was quite difficult because erbium is not very soluble in glass. So we had to set about thinking how to improve the solubility of the erbium ions in the glass, how to get more sugar in the tea. 
because the more erbium ions in the glass, the shorter the amplifier can be in terms of the fibre length, and therefore everything becomes more economical and more efficient. So getting the erbium ions into the glass was a difficulty. This was actually achieved by co-doping with aluminium ions, and then um, this was then proven as a device for the internet.